Hello, I'm Susan Valdez, your Hillsborough County Public School Board member, District 1, and you're watching Tampa Bay Community Network. I'm Bill Hodges and this is Spotlight on Government. Education. The most important thing that any of us can do is to get a good education. And I have Susan Valdez from the school board here in Hillsborough County, District 1. Yes, sir. Hi, Bill. To talk all about what's going on in education right here in this district. Not only for kids, but for adults too, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. Yes. Yes, indeed. There's so many different opportunities uh, for our adults. But Bill, first of all, thank you very much. Uh, for having me on your show and giving me the opportunity to talk about what something my motto is that an education can never be erased and and it's my passion of being able to uh, talk about this. One of the questions I always ask people who run for elective office that come on my show is why do you do that? <laughs> you know it's leadership is 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 so important and when the community that you live in um, comes to you and says you know you, you have been able to help in in other areas uh, for instance prior to being a board member I was in the medical profession and I advocated very uh, strongly for uh, the students the, the, the children that needed uh, mm -hmm. certain uh, things approved by their insurance companies and they would get denied I was that advocate in which, no, this child, is, this is medically necessary. So I was able to really um, help in that arena. So when uh, students and uh, folks got involved and, and they had trouble in school, um, they came up to me and says, how, how can you help us? And one gentleman um, who was a, um, a patient of mine, uh, well, of the clinic, and um, said to me, you know, had this conversation about, I wish I would have, could have, should have, and you can finish <laughs> that whole sentence of whatever. And it was a young gentleman who had a beautiful family and just lost his job, lost his insurance, lost everything just about, and was down and out. And in a conversation with him uh, was just, well, if you could do it all over again, what, what would you do? He says, well, I'd be an electrician. I'm like, okay, well, we can do this. How about if you come see me tomorrow? And we'll fill out your FAFSA. This is before you this ran? This is before I ran. Okay. And let's go ahead and see if we can get you into a program. So I didn't think he was going to show up, but he did. So I said, okay, filled out the FAFSA, sent him on, made a phone call to, to the, the college, uh, which was Irwin at the time, and voila, got him in. So a family that was struggling, that was on public assistance through education, was now off public assistance. Cool. And living a great life with his wife and, and family to the point that after they, he graduated and got everything done, um, that following summer was the very first time that they were able to go for a weekend vacation at Clearwater. Cool. And so, so you see, that's that's what education does. It gives you the opportunity. And that was your impetus to run for the school and board. And that was the impetus because he said you didn't have to do that for me. Of all the elected so, offices, though. <laughs> oh, I love kids. That is, I tell you what, school board is the most thankless office of any of the elected <laughs> offices I've ever seen. And I've interviewed a lot of people in political office, but you're right there at the edge of the sword. Everybody gets to you in the neighborhoods in which Absolutely. you live. Absolutely, um, at the grocery store, you know, but, but this is what, see, that's the foundation, is, is our children. But I see why you did it. Mm -hmm. Now, how long have you been there? I was it's elected, your fourth term, this was my fourth term. I was elected for the first time in 2004, 
and uh, just recently in August I was re-elected to a fourth term. So I'll be are here there any term limits? No, there aren't any term limits. So but they just can't find anybody to fill those jobs. <laughs> but you know though. That's qualified. I think that sometimes when, I think you know when, you're, when your time is done because it has to be fun. You have to be, a, at least is my opinion, you have to be able to really connect with the students, with, you know, with what you're trying to accomplish and really make that, you have to love what you do. And, and that's, I just really truly love advocating for our children and our community. I can see that in, you, in the, the way you talk about it. One, one of your school board members, and I won't say which one because she's not there anymore, but she was there for a long time, started her career in my living room. Wow. She called my wife and said, I'd like to come out and talk to you and Bill. And Phyllis said, sure, come on. So she came out and talked. She said, I'm thinking of doing this. What should we know? Mm -hmm. And we talked it on through. And she went ahead and she won her first campaign. Wow. And away she went. Yeah. She was there for quite a number of years. Absolutely. And we're proud of that. To be uh, a little piece of it. Absolutely. Let's talk about schools. It's, yes, let's do that. What I'd like to know is, I hear a lot about A schools, B schools, even down to F schools. Mm -hmm. How do they get these ratings? That's a very good question. You know, our, the state of Florida has a grading system of A through F for their schools. Now, how are those uh, tallied is through the taking of the state assessment. So it used to be the FCAT, now it's the FSA. So the FSA uh, for us is the AIR exam which is the American Research Institute's exam. So that exam was first uh, taken last school year. Uh, this will be the second year that it's implemented. So based on how well the students do, then the state uh, does their through formula and they come up with a school grade. It, it seems to me there's a built-in unfairness here. If, yes. if you have a school that's in a high-end, wealthy neighborhood, a lot of respect for education, and kids going because parents are standing there saying, you will go. And you have another, well, let's take, and I don't even know what the scale, scale is, but let's take a, a lower-end neighborhood sure. that, that is a working-class neighborhood, maybe not as much education, uh, and that school doesn't do as well. I mean, they'd be working their hearts out. Exactly, and, and it's, there is, to some degree, um, to your point, some level of unfairness. But then that's where, that's where the school board and the superintendent and staff work together to bring resources and, and become more equitable. There is a difference between equity and being equal. So for instance, I want you to picture this in your mind. Let's say I have, um, I'm trying to see a football game from a fence. And one of my friends is way taller than I am and they can see. Another one is a little bit taller or a little bit shorter but still can see, but I'm the shortest one. So what would be equitable for me is for me to get a step stool so I can stand on it so I can see the same. So when we look at what being equitable is, is, is providing those resources that are necessary for that student to be successful and, and provide those for them. So that's the importance of how a culture within a school, um, in a school district, needs to, to change. And that's how, luckily, uh, we were able to um, change, begin to change that culture where it resulted us with a 3.1% increase on graduation rate this past year, which is something really to celebrate. Great. We haven't had that jump. What is our graduation our rate? Our graduation rate right now is 79.1. So we, uh, we roughly have... Roughly 79 point, so roughly 29% don't get there? 29% do not get there. And, and those are the students Bill, those are the students that, that we need to really focus and find those yeah. students early on. But let's not wait till their sophomore year in high school. There has to be a way in which we can 
assess these children that might be in risk. And they're not getting, necessarily stupid kids oh, either. No, Many they of are them not. are ADD and things like yes. that. Yes, they just maybe need a different learning, a teaching style, and have that differentiation. By the same token, there's um, a, a certificate of completion that is offered um, in the state of Florida, which mandates that the school board uh, issue either a diploma if you meet all of your requirements to graduate or a certificate of completion. Nine times out of 10, the students that receive that certificate of completion is because they have not passed the standardized test, which used to be the FCAT, now is the AIR or the FSA. So that particular um, is, is challenging for our students because you describe them. They could very well be an honor roll student. They could have very well taken advanced placement courses, which are college level courses. They do well in the class, have great grades, but when they take that test, it must be some sort of anxiety or could easily something be. that they freeze and they take or that test. Or the way the test is written. Or the way the test is written and they just do not meet that cusp of earning that score, that magic score. But then again, we have opportunities for the students to obtain a concordance score out of the ACT, which is also a college entry exam, in which if they were to score a 19, it is the equivalent to passing the FSA. So guess what? That box is, gets checked oh, okay. off as, as requirement met. So these, these children um, could then earn their high school diploma and move forward. Chris, there's a lot of talk about doing away with a lot of these tests, too, I'm reading. <laughs> well, we talk about differentiation of instruction, yet at the end of the day, when we have to take or have to give the students their standardized test, it's cookie cut because it's all computers. So imagine a student that um, does better with a pencil and paper test, you know, and they can focus more um, and have a better opportunity than doing the exam mm -hmm. on a computer. So that's one of the things that we as a school board and the school board association, when we go to uh, our day in, the, in Tallahassee in the legislature, we'll have that opportunity to talk with our delegation, of which we have a phenomenal relationship with locally, to be able to address some of these things and, and hopefully um, do something with that certificate of completion. My hope is that it goes away um, because that certificate of completion does not afford our children to be able to go it's a stigma. to the military. They can't. Oh, really? It's not yes. good enough to get, it's you have not, to have a GED to get there? Mm -hmm. You have to have a high school diploma or its equivalent. And it, well, how is the GED, do they have to, I, I guess, uh, how do you get a GED? Is that, well, is that taking that same test that the person flunked and didn't get the other? No, actually, if, now the students, they can take the standardized test, how, even after they graduate, how many times they need to in order to get their high school diploma from their high school. Oh, all right. So if, Is there a cost for them to do that? There, there would not be a cost for them to take the standardized test okay. over. Um, with the ACT, there is a cost for, to purchase the license to get to the test because it's also computer-based. But what it does is, is that if finally, once you get that concordance score, you are able to trade in your certificate of completion for your real diploma. And I've had the, the uh, pleasure of being able to present our students um, their uh, real high school diploma after passing these tests that they didn't think otherwise that they, that they could. And these are very smart students that just for some reason um, do not do well on this test and yet we are penalizing them. So my hope is, is that we can do away with that um, certificate of completion for our uh, general education students.
Just keep giving them tests until they can pass one. Well, exactly, but not to penalize the students for not being able to do well on an exam where they can't even join the military. The schools are so important. I mean, economically, if you look at any elected office or any major office, superintendent of schools carries more power in a, commu in a community than anybody. Absolutely. Nobody believes that because so it's so much quiet. Mm -hmm. But the schools have their hand in everything. Absolutely. Real estate. Uh, a lady on, on Facebook the other day was in the Ruskin thing, and she said, we're moving there, tell me what the schools are like. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And somebody said, well, don't move here because the schools are F. Another one said, well, wait a minute, my kids are getting a good education there. We're involved, we're, we're, we're and, parents groups. Bill, that's a great point because of the fact that we have a system of, of grading our schools of A through F. I could have a child at a school that's considered a low performing school, but it's the right school for my child because they are receiving what they need in order to be successful. So I really, the grading system, I, I may not really agree with them at times because, I'll give you an example. You might have a, a school that is highly uh, an English language learner. Well, Ruskin's an example like that. And Many, and, many and workers ex yes, are, in the fields have their children going mm -hmm. there. So what happens is, is that it may, it's not that they don't know the material. They can't express Give, it. Well, or it's a language acquisition issue. So right now, if we were to be given a test in another foreign language that's going to um, determine our future, I am sure that we would not do well. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> so, I have trouble enough with English. So, so it's, it's difficult. My wife will tell you that. <laughs> so, you know, Bill, thinking about what it is to help students become successful, um, it, it takes what can parents do let's parents. talk about successful Absolutely. Uh, I, i'm almost sure that when my kids graduated from school there was a sigh of hallelujah to get me out of the school system because i was up there all the time <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, parent involvement's important uh, but how can parents best be involved you know parents and you, you mentioned earlier while we were talking that, you know, some parents have to maybe work two, three jobs. It's, you know, it's a challenge. But parental involvement comes in so many different ways. Um, maybe because the parent has to work, they cannot go to the school PTA meetings or whatever. But the way parents can get really involved is taking that time of reading to their child, at least if it's 30 minutes a day. Oh, so important. Of sitting down and having that quiet time of, okay, we're gonna read. And even if it's not in English, if, if, you're, if you're not fluent in, in English, but you know, let's, let's read in, in whatever language, Spanish for instance, the more you read, the more knowledge you obtain. As you are uh, learning a new language, all you're doing is really translating your knowledge because that's something that no one can take away. So it's sometimes it's the confusion of the language acquisition versus really do you know the material. I, I'm a firm believer if you live here, you ought to speak English. Absolutely. I'm sorry. That's, you know, there are, I, I don't care if you speak Spanish too. Absolutely. That's just fine. And in fact, every night I spend 30 minutes or actually 20 minutes going through Spanish, trying to learn a little bit of it. So I think it's important to have more than one language. But if you're gonna live in the United States, we ought to have a language. And there are a lot of parents, a lot of even older people, who do not have English. And one of the things I learned about the school system just in the last month was a friend of ours who are a couple in their 60s who are moving here from Venezuela, don't speak English, are starting to go to a program you have for adults. Or our adult program and, is and, awesome. And I am so excited at just watching in 30 days what changes has happened in their ability to speak English. Absolutely. Can we talk about that program oh, a little I'd bit? I'd love to talk about that. This is with our adult basic education. And um, they're called the English for Second Language 
as a second language program. And it's specifically for that. So initially they'll, you know, they'll see where you are in your ability uh, of, uh, of the uh, language. He was in the third grade, she was in the fourth. There you go, so that's, <laughs> that's wonderful. So that's where the instruction begins. So you get placed in the, the specific category that you're in so that you do not have different levels of, of English uh, speakers in the same room. In the yeah. same room. And it's beautiful. It works. They work really on in their own pace, and and, and the instructor is is right there with them. Conversational, Conversational grammar, grammar, everything. 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 Um, is there one? Uh, can can those of us that think we can speak English take the class? Absolutely. Because <laughs> the grammar part, I've never understood. <laughs> Absolutely, our, we have so many opportunities for our, our adults. And given the, the time that we're in right now in which um, a lot of our adults are needing to retool themselves because either factories are, are closing down or you know, just the economy is kind of weird right now. So um, it, it affords that opportunity for the adults to say, you know, maybe I need to take a computer course. Or, or maybe I need to learn how to get into some IT programs and, and how does one learn about where these programs are and, and if, what the cost to, to take I have them? So, oh my God, they're great. How, That's do, a how great do you question. do that? Where do you go? We have. Is there an online um, source? There is. If you go to the school district website at okay. um, www.sdhc.k12.fl.us. Um, and it takes you directly Maybe we'll to, put that on the screen. to our to <laughs> our um, uh, our website, and you can navigate there for the adult um, education, and it brings you to our career colleges. We have is it throughout the county? Or it is different. So it is many there. of these people don't have the ability to drive to to. to Temple Terrace or somewhere most, else. Yes, most of our high schools have. Uh, an adult program, okay, um, because it's also used for our our students in high school if they need to maybe uh, get a little help with uh, uh, credit recovery. Then, and if they're doing well, then we will allow them to take a course after school through the adult program so they can catch up with their credits. So it's 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 just a great opportunity. There is really no excuse for any adult that is wanting to. Um, to retool um, or to, to Are these find all academic classes these, or are there? They're academic, are, they're technical. Um, I was thinking of our, our technical schools that yes, we have. Yes, those are our, our technical colleges. Okay. So we have Irwin, um, Brewster, we have Leary, we have a missing one. South County? Um, What's well, the see. one down on 41? The one on four, the, is that the career center? Career center, yeah. Yes, because we have four career centers. Oh, okay. and those career centers are for high school students. Are they different than what you were talking about? Kind of, because those are your career students, your uh, career schools are for your high school students mm -hmm. versus the adult ed is in the evening. Oh, okay. So the career, uh, the career centers are for students during the day, and there they obtain uh, certifications for either um, computer construction management, right. I mean, so many different things. I, I just absolutely love the Career oh, Center yes. down there on 41. Yes, yes. Uh, we, we went down and did several shows there when mm -hmm. John was in charge and then Sonny was in charge. And it's fascinating. Yes, yes. Uh, and it, they take <clears throat> pride. And, and the Career Centers um, are most of the students that go to the career centers is because they weren't really successful in the in the traditional high school. So they needed something more that was Kids hands risk. on. Absolutely. And those are the students that wanted to do something with their hands, wanted to yes, they have to do the academics, but guess what? They they, they want something else. And they do such a remarkable job over there. John, who was the principal down there for quite some period of years mm -hmm. before he retired, uh, probably before your time, actually, uh, he had a problem. Every student that came into that school, he would have at his desk, and they had to go through him mm -hmm. in order to go to the classes. Absolutely. He talked to them all, and he said his biggest problem was that after they'd been there and it was time to graduate, they'd flunk classes. Hmm. Because they didn't want to leave. Didn't want to leave. 
And these are kids that walked in backwards to start with, so they didn't see the building until <laughs> they got there. And, and that's, that's the beauty of, of giving the students an opportunity. We cannot give up on our children. Uh, I, I, I teach a class on right brain, left brain, and our school systems are much too left brain. Mm -hmm. And there's a whole group of people out there that are left out in the cold because they don't learn that way. No, they don't. Uh, for those of you listening, a major difference is if you tell a right brain child or a left brain child, learn the multiplication tables because someday you're going to need them. They'll say, great. And they'll sit right down and do it. Tell a right brain child that, he'll say, why do I have to? Well, someday you're going to need it. He said, teach me what I need to know now. I'll learn that when I need it. Mm -hmm. And it's a whole different structure whole different of teaching. Structure. Yes, absolutely. So I'm, I'm glad it's recognized. I'd like to see more done in that direction. Mm -hmm. And maybe there is, and I'm just not seeing it yet. Right, and, and I'm hoping <laughs> that um, as we are moving forward in, in, in doing the great things that we're doing in the school district, that that is definitely an emphasis in learning the students' learning styles as well. <laughs> Think about it, you may have um, 15 students, 18 students in a class, and they're all different types of learners. And, and that teacher has to be able to reach all of these children, and that takes a little bit of a while for the teacher to really get to know their, the child and what their strengths and, and, their, and their learning style. So I'm hoping that... Um, Plus they have to want to. I'm, I'm oh, sorry. Oh, you have to have My experience the is that I, I ran into teachers that this is the way I've done it, this way I'm always going to do it, and if you don't want it that way, get out. Mm -hmm. uh, well, that's all right, but if, as, quite honestly, <laughs> as a person in business, if I did that with my clients, I'd lose them all. Right. And I don't think they see the student as the client. And that's a very good point because we, public schools, are in competition. Going to be more so if the new Secretary the new of Absolutely. Education gets in there. Absolutely. So it's very important that parents know that they have a choice. They really do. I hope the choice is Hillsborough County Public Schools <laughs> um, because we really have many opportunities for our students to succeed. Um, we just have to make sure that parents know how to navigate the system and what questions to ask and how we can help advocate for each child. And taking each question seriously. And, and that's exactly. From what I've seen about the Hillsborough schools, they do. Mm -hmm. From Jeff on down. Absolutely. Everybody. I know I've called a few times to talk with various people, and they've been very helpful with mm -hmm. me. I, I am really <clears throat> um, excited about the leadership team that we have with uh, Jeff uh, Akins as your superintendent, as our superintendent. Well, Earl was my hero. And yeah, Earl's <laughs> a good guy. And, Still um, is. Yeah, absolutely. I just love that man. Absolutely. And um, also the chief of staff, uh, Dr. Vasquez. And the leadership team is, is just, I'm so hopeful um, and re-energized every time uh, I hear them speak and I hear them address Susan, the guess principles. what? We've just ran out of time. Wow, that's awesome. Would you come but back and see me absolutely, again? Absolutely, Bill. Susan Valdez, District 1, Hillsborough County Schools. Thank you. Love to have you back. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Bill Hodges. This has been Spotlight on Government. You're unique, you're special, you're great. Tell yourself so often because you are, you know. We'll see you on the next Spotlight on Government. And Susan, thanks again for being with us. Thank you very much. And I'm looking forward to coming back.